On-tap plumbing and gas covers all Perth areas from Mandurah to Two Rocks and has a team of plumbing, drainage and hot water experts. They have an amazing reputation for their excellent service and quality workmanship on time, every time, and it is easy to see why they are a favourite to many Perth property managers. Whether you just need some friendly advice or an obligation-free quote, look no further than On Tap Plumbing and Gas. Welcome to the PM Collective, a dynamic hub designed to empower business owners, property managers and BDMs to excel in their careers. Through access to intimate conversations, cutting edge of video training, mental health support and unparalleled motivation, our community is the ultimate destination for individuals seeking to elevate their professional lives to new heights. So sit back, relax and enjoy our next conversation on our weekly podcast, The Art of Property Management. Today, I am super excited to have Jonathan Bell joining us. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Now, those that don't know Jonathan, he is the owner of Housemark and also Wingman. And you have a really cool story with sort of getting started in real estate. Now, I've heard it, but I have actually mentioned you to a few people recently and said, you know, go have a look at what John does because you do some really cool stuff. Um, So can you just give those that don't know you a bit of a brief history on actually how you started Housemark and then how Wingman eventuated? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for the intro. I um, I started my business four and a half years ago. Um, So it was when I was speaking at ARIC, it was the 9th of March, 2018 was when I got my first ever management um, and I just had a vision at that point to change the way that property management had been done. Um, typically, you know, sales, it's a sales business and then they've got a property management arm that probably doesn't get the care and love that, you know, it probably deserves. Um, so I had a, I had a desire and, and an ambition to change that perception of the property management industry. Um, started from scratch. Um, I think after 12 months, I got to about a hundred managements. Um, and then from 100, we've grown exponentially and we've um, just over 2,000 managements in in Queensland now um, across two offices. And has that been a mixture of organic and acquisitions? Uh, 1,800 out of the 2,000 has been organic. Um, we've only bought only bought 200 and we're growing by a, about 70 to 80 new managements a month organically at the moment. Amazing. Like people's jaws are going to drop by when they hear that story. And it's very, very impressive. Um, And I remember, I don't know if you still do this or not, but I remember hearing you talk about how every morning you would have like a breakfast catch up with somebody. Do you still do that? Yeah. um, I've just, I've actually just um, changed it to 6.30am. So I do it a six and I've challenged who, you know, Tyler, I've challenged Tyler to do the same. So um, a 6.30 a.m. catch up every morning um, yeah. with an industry colleague. Um, and also I've put a 5 a.m. call to my business coach every morning as well. So I, I'm a morning person. I love getting started in the morning and that I feel like I've got so much more time in the day now having those 6.30 a.m. catch ups. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I will say, I'm going to tell you a story because I was talking to my kids about you and about Tyler the other day when Tyler gave me a call. And um, the first thing I was saying to my kids was that it's really interesting from a marketing perspective, whether you did this on purpose or just, you know, realized later that it was actually a good marketing tactic. But I said to the kids, do you know there's this guy that he takes a new person out for breakfast every morning? And if you think about it, let's just call breakfast for argument's sake $30. $30 a day and for, you know, five days a week, $150 per week, that's really good money, like marketing money spent, like really good. And it's the human connection and all of that. And, And I just think that that's amazing. And it's just a little bit of different thinking that, you know, people might, easily spend $150 hypothetically in a different type of marketing. But this is this is really, really smart. And I want to tell you a story about Tyler. So this is how we got on the conversation of um, yeah. you guys in, in, in my 40-minute drive to school each morning. <laughs> so Tyler calls me up and obviously he's full of beans. And this is early in the morning. It must have been at about, I don't know, 7.45 a.m. or something. And because he didn't know there was a time difference in Perth. So then he calls me up and then he tells me at the end of this um, conversation a story. We hang up. My kids go to me, Mum, 
that's really random. Why would Tyler tell you this like random story um, to finish off the conversation? And I said, I don't know. However, this is very, very clever marketing, guys, because number one, how many people remember a marketing guy's name, first of all? Now we all in the car know Tyler's name. So we remember him. I said, but he's also left us with a story that, you know, that what's potentially random in a really good way. Uh, and we now remember Tyler and the conversation based on this story that he left us with, which was completely uh, not real estate related. And whether or not that is a smart technique or him just being fun, I don't know, but it was very, very clever. Uh, and it happened to me again that day where someone had left with a story. And again, another person said to me, that's really random. I said, no, this is the second time it's happened to me. These young people are fantastic <laughs> at storytelling and marketing. So not sure like if that's like a plan or not, but it worked. Yeah, no, I think storytelling is the best way to be able to communicate. Um, I think even with your, you know, internal team, your property management team, or, you know, your employees, the way telling a story will always get the best outcome of of them remembering either who you are or what you're trying to tell them. Um, yeah. So I'm all about storytelling and I've learned a lot from Tyler. And I think the other thing, and Tyler's um, one of our business development managers at Wingman Group for everyone listening. So he um, he calls a lot of businesses and helps them use utilize offshore solutions. But he's got the most amazing energy and it's so contagious. Um, and that's what I've learned from Tyler. Like he, he just has this... Um, energy where people want to talk to him people want to learn from him um, and he's doing phenomenal things and um, building some really good relationships purely from his energy level um, and you know if you have a meeting with him at 6 30 in the morning you'll just want to go crush the day um, he's yeah. just got that aura about him um, so I've learned a lot about that from Tyler he is impressive absolutely uh, everyone needs a Tyler in your life so <laughs> call you as a marketing call, talk to him and have a really good conversation with him because he's super, super fun. Um, so now I want to have a talk about Wingman and how you implemented this business, how, how that came about in Housemark uh, yeah. and how you use VAs and what that looks like in the property management space for your office. Yeah, really organically. So when I had about um, I think Jess Villa, who some of you may know from previous talks I've done, is she was my first ever staff member based in the Philippines. Um, and she, I think she started with me when I had about 67 managements. Um, and I actually couldn't afford an Australian at the time and I needed some support. Um, I was starting to get overwhelmed with the amount of workload. Um, and Jess became my right-hand lady. I, I met her through a mutual friend um, and she just started sharing we started sharing ideas. I started training her um, and it got to a stage after about a month where I would share my screen for about 12 hours a day. And I literally would just train on, on everything I knew. Um, I had a I had a piece of paper like this one here and I just write down every single thing that was repetitive. Um, and if I ever had to do something twice, I would train Jess so that I don't have to do it again. Um, after I trained Jess on what to do, she would then record it, record the session create an SOP, a standard operating procedure, um, and then she would file it as in her library of content. Um, fast forward about six months, she became the most pivotal part of my business. Um, I got to a stage where I didn't even need a computer. Um, Jess would do literally all of the back-end work for me and I focused purely on business development. Um, Jess then got really busy and then she said, can my husband start? So her husband was an accountant. Um, he then started running all of our accounts. So to this day, he runs all of our zero rent reconciliation, um, basically everything to do with accounts. He even, you know, he talks to Macquarie about getting a loan. Um, everything is done through Adam um, and Jess runs our whole operations team. Um, so we've got about 40 staff offshore in my real estate business now. Um, and then because I'm so passionate about the Philippines, I just, I just wanted to help other businesses do the same. Um, and I think a lot of people have had a good or bad experience in offshore. And I found it really interesting. And I think a big part of it is the training of the offshore person. You know, it takes a long time to get them trained and upskilled to be able to manage properties and, and assist pro a property management team. And I was just lucky enough where I didn't really have an option and, you know, I didn't buy a rent roll so I could teach Jess from the ground up. Um, so 
we then built a three month training academy offshore um, where we put people through before going into any Australian property management business. And I think that's where we've seen the real success is by the time these people offshore go into other businesses through Wingman Group, they're actually already trained in property management. Um, and like, it's really interesting, like offshore, like Filipinos, they don't have hot water systems. So when they, when they're working in an Australian property management business and they see an email about a hot water system, unless they're trained, they don't know what that is. They don't know what a landlord is. They don't know what a tenant is. They don't know what an investor, the wording investor is. So there's a lot of back end training that needs to go on to actually get them into a position where they can assist a property manager. And if you just expect them from day one to jump in and start helping your property manager, that's where I've seen a lot of offshoring fail. And then, you know, that's where it gets the stigma that it sometimes has today. Yeah. I, the, it, what you, At the start, you said about screen sharing your computer and what a fascinating way of actually training someone directly or just having them present like they are right next to you and seeing everything they do like I know that that's not possible for everybody but what a great idea to get started in our office now we've got um two big um screens tv screens um and our offshore team sit on them all day so they're basically in our office every day and we've got like headphones where they can talk so we've got a fully interactive office and they sit in the office every day in our business that, that's really awesome. So you said you've got 40 offshore staff. Is, have you got 40 that work um, for Wingman or do you mean 40 inside Housemark? Yeah, so we've got 40 inside Housemark and then we've got 150 who work across other agencies in, in um, Australia. Holy moly. Yeah. So, so what does the, and I'm asking because people are going to be really, really curious. So, okay, call it 2000 Management, you've got the VAs. How many um, sort of in-house property managers would you have? We have our property managers manage between 250 to 350 properties each. Yep. So we've got eight senior property managers across the 2000 properties. We do then have some support staff who help with entry reports, um, um, routine inspections and exits. Great. And then um, with the VA, so I've got one in our business at the moment yep. and she's great. She does everything. But if I was to get a second VA in the business, do you find that it's easier just like as two, and there might be a third option, but I'm, in my mind, I've been thinking the two options. One would be that you have um, both, um, both VAs do everything or tasks but they do it for separate people so like VA1 would do it for um, property manager you know Amy and Casey and then the second VA would do it for the other people or would you start separating their tasks so there's one VA that just concentrates on rent areas one that does lease renewals one that does managing authorities what does that look like in the back end for you? For me it looks we um, we're more task based um, every agency runs differently, which I'm learning, um, and everyone's got a different point of difference. So we are very flexible through the wingman group of actually um, like how people run their businesses and we support them underneath how they want to run them. Um, in our business, we have um, every property manager gets their own executive assistant based offshore. So if you're a senior property manager, you get your own executive assistant. That executive assistant does all the maintenance, um, the lease renewals, um, all of the tenant um, communication via email. Um, that basically leaves the senior property manager to do landlord communication. And that's it. We then have an accounts division where we've got four people offshore and they're all qualified accountants in the Philippines. They do all of our rent reconciliation, um, all of our invoicing, and they do all of our um, landlord replies as well, which is really interesting because everyone gets those landlords who reply saying, can you send me this, this, and this? And unless you have an accounting background, it's a bit hard to understand exactly what they want. Our Philippine staff draft a reply through our CRM system that we use, and then the property manager checks it and sends it off. And then we've got one more division, which is our new business division. So our again, our um, BDMs get an executive assistant based in the Philippines, frees them up to basically spend pure 40 hours a week on growth um, and no administration. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Sensor Global saves lives with automatic compliance and manages smoke alarms, gas and water leak detection with 24-7 remote management. It provides complete control, reduced risks and improved compliance for property managers. To find out more, speak to Anthony Booth or head over to sensorglobal.com. See, I like that. I um, was chatting to someone the other day how I think the world is going to pivot a little bit when it comes to EAs and BAs. So I have got one personally that I've started using and I haven't ever hired someone personally before. But I think that the time is going to come where just like you have got an EA that works alongside each property manager, which I think is great. I also think, and this is a little bit um, weird, but I actually think we're going to get to a point in life where each person is going to have their own EA or their own um, BA and that when they go get a job, like let's say I want to go get a job at your place, at your office, I come with my own VA who knows my style. Don't you reckon like that'll be awesome? A hundred percent. Yeah. I, um, I want to, I want to build something out where it's like run out, run it. Like I was thinking runmylife.com and like someone who actually helps you run your life, books, your flights interstate, um, knows what Uber Eats you like. So if you need Uber Eats, hey, can you get me some Uber Eats at this time? Um, books, the hotels, like there's so much life admin, that is better spent someone else can do for you where you can focus on what you want to do. Um, and as everyone gets more time poor, I love that idea. Yeah. And, and I, was, I had mentioned it too, um, cause I had recently got my VA. I'm off to Japan in a few weeks and I had sent her all my tickets and um, hotels and, and everything that I wanted to do. And I said, can you just create me an itinerary? Yeah. Here's all the information, just sort it all out for me. And she did a great job. She sent me through the itinerary and I was telling my sister and my sister was, and she's got a 16 year old um, son. And she was like, oh my gosh, she goes, I can picture Lucas, you know, hiring a VA himself. And that's why I was like, this is what's going to happen, Kat. Like children are going to hire them, like you said, for Uber Eats, um, you know, birthday coming up, um, you know, photos from a holiday, getting them all in Google Drive, for example, you know, just stuff like that. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but I um, I used to get my assi- my university assignments done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. A- absolutely. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. So I think that that's really great. I would... For me personally, I'd love to get to the point of having the each property manager with their own because I think that that's really great. I mean, I love how I use mine. I just WhatsApp her. I just email her, get her to do all those things, especially when you're out on the road. Um, and I guess that's where people really struggle with understanding like what the next step would be. And so it's really great to hear from you with how you've got it structured because for me now, I'm like in my mind, okay, that might actually be a really good way of doing it. Each person has their own and start introducing it that way um, to help them scale. And it's it's a really big problem in business, I find, at the moment with capacity. And I'm so glad that your team does do a good capacity because I carry on about this a lot, that we are, that property managers, despite the technology, despite what they've got access to these days, they are still managing what I consider low num- low portfolio numbers. And I also um, believe that, and I, I say this like hardly, and, and I don't, if the property managers listening, I don't mean this in, with any malice, but people will say that they're busy, whether they've got 80 properties or 200 properties. Everyone, you you are busy to your capacity and we don't push that capacity. So I like pushing capacity. I think it's healthy for us personally and professionally. And um, I, you know, that that is the level that my team, I think, are at about 180. They probably would be happy with 200. But the next step would be, hey, if I was to get you your own EA, would 250 be achievable? And I absolutely think that it would be. So that um, has definitely given me some good thoughts on how that works. So tell and me. It's really, you- um, it's really good for retention as well, Ashley. Like every single one of my property managers who started with me within about a month has come to me and said, I could never go back to the way property management used to run. So as a as a business owner, it's been a, a really good opportunity for um, staff retention because people, property managers wouldn't want to go to another agency now and do all the activities that they don't have to do anymore. Yeah. Um, 
and and it's also very profitable for the business and then also like it gives us an opportunity where we can pay our property managers more um so we have an incentive structure if they if property managers want to manage more properties then we can actually pay them more um you know if you can get your property managers going from 200 properties to 250 properties it makes a substantial difference to the profitability of the business which i think you know if you if you want to you can then utilize that money to then pay your property managers more which gives you good staff retention so I see it as like a win-win for both the employee and the employer. Yeah, absolutely. So your team that um, your wingman team do yep. they um, have? Do they obviously get trained in all programs? Um, is there anything that they specialize in particularly? And do you have custom um, like custom workloads where you might have like if I said to you, I want a marketing manager? Could you find me a marketing manager or is there a focus on the property management tasks? Yeah, um, we have a really broad range. So we've got a three-month training academy that every single person offshore goes into. So month one is all about what is Australian culture, what is, you know, every um, VA, every VA or remote professional starts, they always say, hello, sir, hello, madam. You know, we don't do that in Australia. Um, we call them by their first name. So little things like that we start with. And then we talked about what is property management. So what is the industry? Why? What is the need of a property manager? Month two is all about the software. So we train in all CRM systems um, and all property management softwares. So by the end of month two, they have to be as proficient as a senior property manager within that software. So they watch hundreds of hours of softwares and, and then we also test them every Friday on those softwares. And then month three is bespoke to the business that they're working for. So they're working for a task-based property management business, a portfolio-based property management business. They're working in property management, BDM, or customer service, wherever they're working, and we train them specific to what their role will be. So by the time they come out of that program, they're, they're very well trained in property management. Um, and then we also then do tailored hire, hiring for agencies. So all of our marketing for Housemark and Wingman is done offshore. Um, all of our ads for our real estate is written offshore. So we've got ties over there for marketing, um, accounts, digital marketing, like SEO, whatever really people want. Um, and that's what we're all about. Like the Philippines is an amazing place. There's 13 million people in Manila. Um, and every single person we hire over there has a university degree. Um, and every job ad we put up, we get over 100 applications per job. Um, so we're interviewing at the moment for an IT provider. Like we're going to get an in-house, someone offshore who's going to run all of our IT. Like we spend a substantial amount on an Australian IT company that can be done offshore as well. So um, we're using it in every part of our business and it just gives us so much more opportunity to spend money on growth. Yeah, amazing. So that that's really great. So if you're listening and you do have like a, a bespoke sort of position that you need, um, you're reaching out to Wingman and seeing, um, you know, what options are available is a great idea as well. Um, we have spoken about there's some hesitation that people have with VAs. Mm. And um, I've got two questions for you. The first question is, what do you find is the biggest myth that um, or misconception that people have and the second question is are we using the right terminology like I just heard you say before remote professional are we should we like you know potential like is VA like okay to use or should we start as as a as an industry changing our language with regards to what we um what we call that position Yes, um, I love that you brought that up because Filipinos don't like being called VAs, virtual assistants. Um, they believe that they are more qualified than that and titles in the Philippines are very important. Um, so if you give your remote professional a um, change in title, watch how happy they are. That's more important to them than a financial incentive. So we call all of our staff overseas remote professionals. Um, and then in our um, in our property management business, Housemark, we call them assistant property managers. So, and then Adam's our head of accounts, Jess is our operations manager. So they all have titles no different to Australians, but as a category, they um, Filipinos would much rather be called remote professionals, RPs, um, than VAs. The only reason I say VA is valuable asset. Um, so ah. that's the way that we use of the wording VA. Clever. Yeah. Um, and then what was your, your first question was around the myths? Well, yeah, well, yeah what, what, what do you find is 
people's biggest like misconception about using remote professionals like why they are so why are people so hesitant to start that process yeah i so um everyone says um it doesn't work like offshore is an it it's like a product offshore is a is is it's a human being um they're actually no different to hiring an australian so I find it really interesting in wingman people are more nervous about hiring someone offshore for a third of the price than a senior property manager who's got access to all your data and all your landlords. Um, so it's not, and if you have a bad experience, that's potentially the person it's not the, it's not offshore as a general, that doesn't mean all 13 million people in Manila are not capable. So I think that the, the thing is that a lot of people give offshore one chance and if that one person doesn't work, then they'll never use it again, rather than going, you know what, maybe it was the person overseas, maybe I didn't train them well enough, maybe they weren't trained enough, or it was their leader, you know, what are all the other factors that went into it, um, and giving it another opportunity. And and that's probably the biggest thing is people keeping an open mind to it, treating them like Australians. Yeah, so just like you have um, the three month academy for the you know the remote professionals, sounds like that Australian property managers need a three month academy before they get to use one. Yeah, yeah, and the coaching, like you know, tr- property managers are very protective as they should be of their workload. So letting go and getting someone else to do their work for them is a challenge, and it takes time to be able to get them to do that and. And what's the incentive for the property manager to manage more properties? Like as a business owner, just getting them to manage an extra 50 properties. Well, what do they get out of that? Um, yeah. And they're all the conversations we try and have with the business owners and, and the team leaders to be able to assist with that transition. That That's right. Because I think that um, quite often people use uh, added extras, like whether um, it's using outsourcing or whether it's new technology or whatever it might be. I find that, um, you know, it, it's very common. Property manager complains to business owner. Business owner, like a band aid, will just fix the problem by you know providing something, tech support, outsourcing, whatever it may be. But they do that like a band aid fix, as opposed to saying, "Well, listen, if I was to get this in for you, um, not only would we be able to free up your time, but you're also going to, you know, would would you be able to do this capacity? Or you know, there's it's a give and take from everybody. I find, and I don't think those conversations are had because if we just put a band aid over something just to sort of pacify the situation. It actually only lasts for a few months from experience. You know, it lasts for a couple of months. It's helpful for a couple of months. And then next minute, you're back to where you were before. So um, like you said, the incentive needs to be there as well. And those discussions um, need to be had. And I think that um, like that's really great that you have those conversations. So if you know anyone does want to explore the option of how they can assist their property management team uh, and, and get in touch with you, then you know you can create something bespoke. But how great that you also have property managers backed by having those conversations as well, you know, with the business owner to make sure that the business is profitable. And at the end of the day, we all just want long-term loyal staff, don't we? Like that's what that's what we're aiming for in life. Yeah, 100%. And being able to provide our landlords the level of service that they expect yeah. and, you know, the giving the property managers the time to be able to do that. But I would even challenge as well, like why is it called outsourcing? Like we call it insourcing. Like, yeah. what's the, you know, like it's basically they're a staff member within your business. They just don't work in your office. So, um, you know, I just think that that mindset shift as a business and then as an industry will give um, the Philippines a lot more credibility. Um, And, you know, we've just um, we've just got our phones. So all of our phone calls are answered by a guy called Richard um, and he has a Canadian accent, but he's based in the Philippines. He's answering 80 tenant calls a day because we're growing so quickly, like we're trying to reduce our calls, but 80 tenant calls a day are answered. And the reviews we're getting from him are amazing. Like we're getting Google reviews and emails saying, Richard's amazing. He's so friendly. Um, He turns up every single day. He answers every single call. So, you know, we've even gone a step further with actually letting him speak to our um, clients directly. So good. Yeah. It's um you you run an incredible business and I think that you there's an extra layer of um I, I'm impressed to it an extra layer because you have come into the industry relatively new 
where we've, you know, like a lot of us have been in the industry for, you know, over 20 years, but with a fresh mind and with a non, um, like with a non-real estate background. So you just come in completely fresh and going, well, why not? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? And it's really refreshing to actually see. And I hope that those listening do pay attention to uh, to this, you know, to your business and how it works for you and how incredible it is and, and the growth because it, it really is, um, it's it's really amazing what you've done and, and setting up Wingman as well. And it's it's in a way a bit of a kick up the bum for people <laughs> that are just doing things like they always had. So if if they don't follow you, um, please go over. I mean, I follow you guys on um, Instagram. So go follow Wingman, go follow House Mark, go check out what is happening inside this business because it is incredible and you're all going to have to watch your back and I'm glad you're <laughs> not on earth. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. And and, um, and encourage everyone to call Tyler and have a 6.30 a.m. meeting with him. <laughs> Please call Tyler. He's great. You've got some really great people in your business. And I appreciate your time jumping on and yeah. sharing um, some knowledge with everyone. So now Tyler is um, works in the wingman business, doesn't he? Correct. Yes. Excellent. So you know what? Call up wingman. Find out a little bit more about the business. Ask for Tyler. He's going to help you and you'll be able. <laughs> Glad you made the call. <laughs> Thank you so much for the kind words. No worries. Talk soon. Okay. Bye. Co provide reliable, fully trained professionals to assist you with running and scaling your property management department, providing high quality pre trained virtual assistants ready to hit the ground running and revolutionize the way you run your portfolio, ensuring your time is spent doing the high value tasks inside your rent roll that really matter. Not long ago, VAs within a business were considered a luxury. Now they are a staple for any business needing reliable support without the headache of traditional staffing. To find out more, head over to theassociatesco.com.